All right, guys, let's just go ahead and get started. We're at Game Chat. We're born at episode six. It's about 8 p.m. Monday, December. <laughs> no, it's not December anymore. It's New Year. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, dear people watching, listening on YouTube and on JustNotTV and at Live.Boy.TV every Monday night at 8 p.m. Happy New Year to you we're here at game chat with born we're gonna go ahead and get started in a few seconds happy new year 20 2011 it's january 3rd 2011 monday at 8 p.m and uh we got about eight or so stories to talk about here at game chat with born you know what we do we talk about gaming stories and uh i take submissions from the chat room we discuss them in the chat room i come up my own stuff and we just go back and forth and talk and blah 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 for about an hour and then we post it and then people post comments and then we repeat it next week that's game chat with one in a nutshell <laughs> so that's that, that doesn't sound like a whole lot when you when you word it that way that that kind of that's kind of depressing i'm gonna have to have a long talk with myself about that particular endeavor all right we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first story and it has to do with Minecraft. Minecraft. And we've been discussing this in our local mumble community and on our forum. And we were brought up we were brought with some bad news because we use a very popular server mod for Minecraft. And you guys have seen my videos. We you know we summon items, we summon TNT, you know, we can we can use the compass to like like a grappling hook and just teleport and we can set home points and all these wonderful features uh we have all these different plugins you guys may have seen my pvp server we can do player versus player there's like these stargates you can walk through a portal and end up somewhere else and all these wonderful plugins are going bye bye that's right the mod we use primarily for all that functionality is called hmod it's made by a developer called Heyo, and he lost interest. In, in so many words, the guy lost interest in the project. So he's not going to support it anymore. He hasn't actually supported it in a long time. It's been run by a separate group of developers. And these guys, what they have done is that they say, okay, rather than, than uh, deal with what Heyo is going through, uh, they decided to start another project. And that's what I'm showing you guys here. It's called the Bucket Project. B-U-K-K-I-T. The Bucket Project. And this is going to be written from the ground up with kind of the same premise, the same ideas in mind. And the, the good thing that I got from reading about what they're doing, I've been following their IRC channel as well, is that they are looking to support all of those wonderful modifications I told you about. They're looking to support all those plugins that were available in Heyo's mod, uh, or, or H mod as we called it. And uh, the Bucket Project is looking to do that, but they're gonna look to streamline it, make it more uh, you know, performance friendly, uh, more modular. There's gonna, there's gonna be a lot more of the components of Bucket that are gonna be plugins. Uh, there's gonna be a core set of plugins, and then there's gonna be things you can load and unload to kind of make it as lightweight and customizable as possible. So. It's got promise, but the downside, the downside of all of this, guys, is that this is going to take time. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, if Notch were to release a Minecraft update tomorrow, all of us using the HMOD plugin right now, we've been in a lot of trouble. We would essentially have to shut our servers down. Uh, Especially people like in my community where we have whitelists, where we only allow certain people to come in. We have anti-griefing measures. We have world guard. You know, make sure people don't do things they're not supposed to do. And uh, if an update comes, you know, if this bucket thing is not ready, and I don't foresee it. I mean, they're making a lot of progress, but to come up with something new in a couple of weeks is kind of a tall order. So, I, you know, I, I don't foresee this being ready, ready. You know for a couple more weeks or a few more weeks but uh you know <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk with our community we're gonna come up with a plan uh the admins and i have been talking 
And uh, we're going to come up with a plan, a mitigation plan, because when an update comes, everything's going to stop. The, the way we have things set up now, everything's going to stop because of Hale's mod going out of business. That's pretty much what's happening. It's called the Bucket Project. So, yeah. Uh, and according to the chat, the guys are talking about it now. This, uh, apparently, they, there may be an update as early as Friday. This Friday. Or an update next week. So, man. We're, we're working on it, guys. But trust me, we spent some time today playing with some options, playing with some options, playing with some things, and coming up with mitigation plans. So, um, worst comes to worst, we'll just have to shut the servers down until <laughs> until Bucket works and work on some tent maps or something. But, you know, we'll, we'll have something for you guys. Check it out, guys. Over at Bucket.org, you can read about it. Join the forum. Join the IRC channel. It's the same network as uh, as Hale's channel was, as Notch's channel is. It's called Bucket channel bucket you can follow the progress there very open you can check out the code you can contribute you know you can view the code open source all over the place check it out they got the details over at bucket b-u-k-k-i-t uh dot org so check it out next story we're going to discuss <laughs> has to do with bad company too don't know if I talked about this on Game Chat with Buona, but on Bad Company 2, Vietnam, the expansion, there is or there was a contest, something that EA had done in the past, EA DICE had done in the past. And they said the first platform, whether it be PC, PS3, or Xbox 360, the first platform to reach 69 million support actions will get a prize. You'll get a map. And by support actions, I mean things like revive, you know, drop a med kit, drop an ammo pack, uh, spot an enemy, anything that supports the team. Um, <laughs> so apparently, it only took the PC gamers a few days uh, to hit 69 million, 69 million collective team actions. And um, having played the game on the PC, I, I mean... That's what we do. That's exactly what we do. I mean, there's a lot of teamwork in Battlefield, Battlefield Bad Company 2. Um, so it didn't surprise me that I I actually thought it would be closer. Um, but uh, it was it only took eight days. And I got to tell you guys, I did my part. <laughs> I was reviving like a madman. I was reviving like crazy. And uh, I was sat. I looked at the stats. I looked at the stats in, in detail because I was curious. And the PS3 and the 360 actually had more time played. They actually had, I believe, they had more revives. They had uh, about the same or less uh, ammo. The big discrepancy, the huge discrepancy, was spotting. And I brought this up. When I when I first played this game on the PS3, when it when it came out as PS3 beta, they put the spot button. Where's my controller? They put the spot button here. Here. The spot button is the select button. I was like, that's the dumbest place to put spotting. And on the 360, I believe it's the back button. So while I want to commend our PC brethren for doing this, spotting is difficult, man, on the console. So I can, I can really see the reasons why that people don't spot as much as they do on the PC. On the PC, it's easy. You just hit Q. You know, you W and A S D and all the places. You just hit Q and you can spot somebody. And uh, and spotting is buggy. It's buggy on the PC. It's buggy on all the platforms. So you you spot somebody and you know it doesn't necessarily spot them all the time. Um, because they put some buffers on that. It's it's understandable. But the discrepancy is huge. Uh, the discrepancy is pretty big. I mean, once we got 69 million on PC, the Xbox has 36 million, and the uh, PS3 had 27 million. So, pretty, pretty big discrepancy. In the chat room, they're talking about it. And it, I spam Q a lot, too. When I play Battlefield Bad Company 2, I my my keep my freaking what is it my my ring finger is it's got like bruises on it 
because I'm hitting Q so hard, and then when I'm, I'm moving, I'm using my other finger. I'm just like Q, 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 Q. Sometimes I'll I'll try to spot somebody before I even shoot at them, and I, I actually die a lot that way because I'm trying to spot them. I'm like spot, spot, so spot, 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 so spot, so spot, 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 spot. I'm just spotting like a crazy man because spotting what it does is that it puts a little indicator over the enemy. And everybody on your team can see where the enemy is once you spot them. You're basically calling out their position. You're saying, hey, I see a sniper right there. And then it shows them on the mini-map. Um, <coughs> for those of you who don't spot in Battlefield, Bad Company 2, start doing it. Your teammates will love you. They will enjoy it. I know I do. Spam that Q is the message that we're giving you guys today. Because it is necessary for a winning match. Now the next story is kind of similar and related. EA Dice kind of has sympathy for <laughs> the PS3 and the 360. Uh can't really say why they would do this, but apparently they said, well, you guys haven't got 69 million support actions yet. Yeah, here's the maps anyway. Here's Operation Hastings. That's the name of the map that you get unlocked. They unlocked it on the consoles uh, a few days ago. <laughs> even, though, even though they were at, what, 34 and 46 million actions respectively on the PS3 and the 360. And that the sudden change of plans is apparently to start this new year off with a big bang as we ended it. Um, it's kind of, if I were on the consoles, I'd be kind of embarrassed. Um, yeah. I'd be a little embarrassed. Just a little bit embarrassed that they kind of gave it to you guys. Um, I'd be a little embarrassed, but check it out, guys. Operation Hastings is available to PS3 and 360 players, even though you guys can't spot. Check it out, guys. Over on joystick.com. They got the details. It's unlocked for everybody now. So the contest is essentially over. Okay. On the same vein, talking about Battlefield, uh, we're going to discuss now Battlefield 3. And apparently, Valve, not Valve, I keep saying Valve, EA Dice has gone on record to state that Battlefield 3... Well, if you're on Windows XP, you might be a little bit disappointed because it ain't going to work. Frostbite 2 was primarily bleh, developed for DirectX 11. And uh, DirectX 9 is not going to be supported. And they're looking for people with 64-bit OSs. And this is for the PC version of Battlefield 3. So a part of me was like, wow, that's kind of, wow. That's just a sign of time. It's time to upgrade. But then I got excited. I was like, wait a minute. Frostbite 2, primarily developed for DirectX 11. Hmm. And they want you to have 64-bit OS? Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Might be time for you guys with your PCs to upgrade. And it doesn't cost, I mean... When we talk about upgrading PCs, I gotta take a moment here. It costs money, it does.
but it, people, you bring up upgrading PCs, they go to Newegg.com and they find the most expensive video card, they find the most expensive memory, they find the most expensive hard drive, they find the most expensive case, they find the most expensive monitor and say, oh my goodness, I need to have $2,500 in order to upgrade my system so that I can play Battlefield 3. This is why I prefer consoles, because I don't want to have to spend $3,500. $68.22 on a PC upgrade. I want to be able to play with what I have. I do not want to spend $4,000 on a new P. And they just keep going up and up and up and up. And guys, it doesn't cost that much money. It costs money, but it's not going to cost that much money. Come on, guys. If you got a gaming PC and you're serious about gaming on your PC, and you know you've reached a point where you're on XP and your your video card doesn't support DirectX 11 you know you can get a new video card you can get an, a 64-bit OS you know for 200 bucks total for both so huh. just don't be discouraged I guess that's the uh, that's the thing I'm trying to say. Don't be discouraged if you fall into this crowd. It doesn't cost that much. You got a few months. This game's not going to be out till later this year. Save up your pennies. Stop spending money on those Steam sales. Stop buying these indie bundles. <laughs> Beg your parents. Remember what I taught you about begging your parents. I want to donate. I want to donate to the DirectX 11 charity for Battlefield 3 veterans in video game land. Let me stop. <laughs> anyway, Windows XP is being relieved from duty. Uh, so if you're thinking about playing Battlefield 3 on your Windows XP box with 32-bit OS and DirectX 9 card, yeah, it's time to upgrade, guys. And you laptop gamers, there's a show on ESPN. They got this saying, come on, man. I know some of you only have laptops to game on, but you can't expect. Come on, man. <laughs> the laptop and Battlefield 3. Come on, man. Y y come on. That's all I got to say. Anyway, guys, check it out. This one's over on Escapist Magazine as well as the previous story about Windows XP being relieved for duty for Battlefield 3. Now, we are going to shift gears into something very flame-worthy and flame. Everybody, go to your closets, get your flame retardant suits, your 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 masks, your boots. Get everything ready because we're about to enter a land of flaming. It's about to get ugly. <laughs> But I have to talk about it. It has to be talked about. So here we go. Here's an article here. <laughs> Here's an article which states, I saw this on News for Gamers. Here are the best reasons to buy an Xbox 360 in 2011. <sighs> Number one. It's not number one. It's just these are the topics that this article covers. Connect provides the most unique form of gaming currently available. Next thing. Xbox Live remains the strongest network for online play. That's two of the reasons that you want to buy an Xbox 360 in 2011. Gears of War 3 and Forza 4 are both great system exclusives. Those are the reasons. Um, yeah. This article is over on Hulick.com, written by David Hughes. 
and guys. All right, let's 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 uh, let's 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 approach this with a leveled head, and we're just gonna go in. Okay. Now, first reason: Connect provides the most unique form of gaming currently available. I got. It. You know, that's opinionated, but it's got some truth to it. Connect is a unique form of gaming. You are the controller. Nobody else is doing exactly that. So, yeah, that is somewhat true. Okay, but is it a reason to buy an Xbox 360? That's debatable. That's where it becomes, you know, it depends. That, uh, okay. I can buy that though. I mean, if that's a reason, I could. Okay, connect. Yes, connect is a reason that you will buy an Xbox 360 in 2011. Okay, next reason. Xbox Live remains the strongest network for online play. <sighs> hmm, I can't agree with that. It is a, a strong network, it is a tight network. Hmm. But man, that is a heavily, heavily opinionated statement to say that Xbox Live is the strongest network. Especially when a lot of the games are peer-to-peer. -peer. And a lot of the networking is all about, you know, matchmaking and, and things like that. And voice chat. Which is okay. But to say it's the strongest is kind of strong. Kind of, kind of strong. Um... And the third reason, uh, this is where it gets ridiculous. He lists two exclusives. Gears of War 3 and Forza 4 are both great system exclusives. I'm not going to say they're not, but two exclusives? You're going to actually list that as a reason for buying the Xbox 360? Two exclusives. I, I, I can't, I, I don't even know why you would list that. They're good games. Uh, Gears of War 3 is a good game. Forza 4 is an excellent game. And that's... Uh, I, 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 guys, I, I'm trying to be open-minded here. I, I own an Xbox 360. Um, but... I mean, even as an Xbox 360 owner, I've talked to a lot of different people who own the Xbox 360, and they agree 2011 is looking pitiful for the 360. 2011 is is it's it's not looking that good, you know, in terms of value versus the other systems, in terms of what you're getting. Now, what's already there on the 360 is great, but when you look at what's coming. Next year, it, it's, it's a very, very short list. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't agree. I just can't agree with these reasons to buy an Xbox 360 in 2011. All right. I mean, there's some other reasons that he didn't touch on too much. I mean, there's the ESPN integration. There's all the different things you can do with Xbox Live, you know. All the different new things that Microsoft came out with that are not gaming related. Those are reasons. If I'm talking to somebody about a console, all right, which console to buy? I will list Netflix, you know, it's on all three now. Netflix, you know, ESPN, all the different DVR stuff, the hard drive stuff, uh, the dashboards, you know, the different experiences. All that comes into play when you're going to buy a console. So I'm not going to say, well, we got two exclusives coming out next year. That's not, I'm not going to list that as a reason. I'm going to say, well, gaming-wise, you know, Xbox 360, you know, you got the multi-platform titles, but when you talk about multi-platform titles, it's not really a, a reason to go <laughs> with a particular console. You want something that differentiates, differentiates itself from other consoles. Not, I got two exclusives. I don't know. I don't know. You guys, am I am I totally off my rocker here? Am I completely off to say that this story is just weird? I mean, there are valid. Re I'm not saying there aren't reasons to buy the 360, but these are just blah. <laughs> I just 
I don't understand. The Connect one is the strongest one because Connect is the newest thing. Connect is on fire. A lot of people are getting into it. It is 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 surprising a lot of people. It is it is. Uh, but game wise, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Yeah. So this this article here, and it was on News for Gamers. It had a lot of a lot of flame behind it. A lot of people were just laughing at it because when you talk about buying the 360 in 2011, exclusives is not the thing because it's pretty weak on the 360. There are other things, but nah, come on. Next story. We're gonna continue to move down the doom and gloom avenue, and we're going to talk about the PS3. And this is bad news. Bad news for the PS3. It's been officially, officially hacked. Now you probably say, well, it got hacked before. Well, it wasn't as easy as this. PS3 got hacked big time. The root key was compromise, which means this box known as the PS3 has been officially pwned, as they say in the hacker community. Pwned. This is bad for the platform. And, and I'll tell you why this is bad for the platform. Um, there is this device that some of you may know of called the PSP. And it suffered a similar fate. And you know what happened because of that? PSP sales suffered and the platform was on the brink of death because it was hacked to death. Nobody was buying games on the system. Nobody. Nobody. Everybody was hacking their PSPs. They were homebrewing it. They were getting downloadable games. Nobody was buying. And that is what almost killed the platform. Now people say, well, the product should be free. We shouldn't have DRM. We did, did, did blah. Did, did, did. The truth of the matter is, they're out to make money, and they didn't make money because of it. So this is happening to the PS3 now, and they're releasing dongles so that you can load anything as if it was a legitimate game. They're releasing development kits. So this is going to be the homebrew version of the PS3. It's going to be homebrewed now. And that's what they called it on the PSP. PSP homebrew. I, It's not good for the platform, guys. I, people are cheering like, yeah, I can finally do this. I can finally do that. It, it this, this is what kills platforms. It does. It, it kills them because the software sales are what keeps the platform going, despite what people may think. If they're not selling games, the platform is going to wither. Um, so... <laughs> And you know what was surprising? This is, I, I didn't know what to think about this. Geohot, he's the one who released this particular one. He didn't crack it, but he released this, uh, the, the root key. He releases this, and then he goes, I don't condone piracy. You know, that's like, that's like a dentist passing out chocolate bars. You need healthy teeth. Here, have a chocolate bar. <laughs> wow, those molars look pretty bad. <laughs> Here's a Reese's cup. I don't get why he's, he's like, okay, everybody. Here's the key. Here, here is, here is everything you need to pirate on the platform. But I do not condone piracy. Do not condone piracy. Nope. 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 <sighs> I, 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 I don't get it. It confused me. I, I, I can't really. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to knock the guy for saying. I just don't know why he did it. Um, uh, huh. <laughs> so this is not good for the platform guys and, and the PS3 is kind of riding a wave of success lately um, 
the platforms on a comeback. I think there were a few million from uh, surpassing the 360 from the uh, worldwide sales, even though it had a year's head start. So it's it's got a lot of momentum. And honestly, this was the last thing it needed. Uh, this is the last thing uh, it needed. So it's... Uh, Kind of funny. Let's go to this last paragraph in the article. It states that it actually it may actually be good for the PS3. Remember, PS2 was massively pirated too. Yeah, he's got a point that the PS2 was massively pirated. But did the PS2 have a lot of competition? Just think about it. when the PS2 was out. What was the alternative? Hmm. Not a whole lot. You could say the Xbox, but it wasn't a whole lot. And when you when you think about it, when you think about it, the PSP had the DS to contend with. The PS3, look at what they have to contend with. They have to contend with the Wii, and they have to contend with the 360. So this is kind of a different scenario, I would say. I wouldn't agree with that being a direct analogy, saying that the PS2 was hacked and it did well. Well, it was on top. I think it was on top before it was hacked. I got to look at the numbers. But I, I believe it was on top before it was hacked. Now the PS3 is playing catch up. They're the number three platform. The PSP was behind the DS. They're they're trying to play catch up. And uh, it's it's a different story right now. It's a different story. That's the point I'm trying to make. It's you can try, it's some things you can compare, some things you can't. And um, given that this is. You know the digital age now everything's online uh whereas in, in the ps2 days everything a lot of things were online but everybody's connected now everybody's connected so if if an iso came out back in the ps2 days there were a lot of people who had access to the iso of a game iso is a, uh, a cd image had the iso of the game and they you know they'd play the game for free there was a lot of people compare that to today or you can go to the Pirate Bay. You can get a torrent of an ISO. It's not going to be the same numbers as it was back then. It's going to be 7 billion times more. Because everybody's connected. Everybody has a CD burner. Everybody knows how to burn a CD. Everybody can read on Google on how to pirate something. It's a lot more volatile now. It's a lot. It's, it's like the flame just goes woof. It, it, it's really, really easy for that to happen. Um, So... This this is not not good. This is not good for the platform. Will it kill the platform? I don't think it's going to kill the platform. I do think it's going to be one of those things that's going to that's going to hinder its momentum. Okay, let's talk about what the root kit actually does. The root kit. What it does is that it fools the console to think, think that this is a legitimate program launching. Now, the PS3 in the past, what they had was they had DRM or they had you know, encryption to protect programs from, from launching. They had to have this key. It's almost like you know, launching an encrypted program. You have to have the right key for, it to, for decrypt and then to run. It's the root key. So essentially... You can fool the console to run anything you want because you have the root key. It's going to fool the console. It, it, that, that's, how, that's how deep this hack goes. It, it, it's going to fool the console. It is the master key. It is the skeleton key. It will unlock any and everything. So that's why this is a big deal. That's why this is a... Uh, a bigger deal than the previous hacks because um, there's not much Sony can do about it. 
I don't think this could be fixed in the firmware update. I mean, this is this is. Uh, I don't know if the, the decryption. I thought the decryption stuff is at the hardware level. I, I may be wrong, um, but I don't think they can just go and change the key because it's going to invalidate all the other games. Uh, it, it's pretty serious, guys. Um, pretty, pretty serious. So, I mean, judging by, I mean, the chat room's kind of agreeing with me. And there's some people who are, you know, have a different point of view. But it's, there's some things that is like, I don't know what Sony can do. I, I really don't know what they can do. And um, I'm rooting for the platform. You know, I want the PS3 to succeed because it's going to make, it's going to make Microsoft better. It's going to make Nintendo better. And they need to get better, man. Nintendo and Microsoft need to get better. I don't think Sony's pushing them hard enough. They need to get better. They really do. And again, guys, this is, you know, it's going to affect sales, software sales. And, you know, that is what drives companies to develop on platforms. If they know that their title will sell on your platform, they'll develop more on it. Now, if it's going to be rooted, in, you know, it's... You know, one one guy on the street buys one copy, then somehow finds a way to resell it with the dongle. You know, here's a here's a root key dongle that you can plug in a USB slot, and here's a blank CD. You know, they're gonna lose a lot, a lot of sales, a lot of sales. Um, so check this out, guys. This one's on this particular story is on VG247.com. Um, very heated discussions about this. Uh, again, I don't know. I don't know why the guy. I don't know why he um would say he doesn't condone piracy. It just that just doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense at all. Okay, let's move on to the next story. And it has to do with the PS3 as well. This kind of surprised me because um, this was IGN's Xbox editor. Uh, he still is IGN's Xbox editor. And uh, he made a statement. Um, he has stated that he is going to switch his platform of choice to the PS3. And he goes into several reasons in this article why he did this. Um, he states in here that he believes, you know, he, he doesn't go out without a bang. He says he believes Forza is superior to Gran Turismo. He believes Halo is better than any first-person shooter on PS3. But he goes on in this article to list reasons why he is choosing the PS3 as his platform of choice. And the main motivator, he's, he says it's the direction that the 360 is going. He's saying that the, the 360 has a very solid platform right now, but he thinks that the tide is turning. He says that, you know, in the past, the PS3 had lesser quality games in certain areas, and now they're almost on par, if not better. Uh, he talked about the network, how the, the, the particular network is, um, used to be, the, the 360's network used to be loads better, now they're about the same. Then he talks about trophies, and now he's talking about the game qualities are about the same. So, this, he's, and he's talking about PlayStation Plus, you know, being a great value. These are all the reasons why, you know, a lot of PS3 owners love the PS3, and they're getting better. So that was his motivation for calling it his, uh his platform of choice. I think it's a pretty big statement. This is this is IGN's Xbox editor. Um and he's saying that he's going to go PS3. So I don't know what to read into this. I'm not going to make any assumptions, you know. I I this is, you know, people ask me that same question. They're like, "Buana, what console do you like best?" And I go, "It's not about what I like best." I said, "It's about what I do the most on." 
And, I said, and at the time of that question, I said, I do the most things on the PS3. I didn't say I like the PS3 more than the 360. I just do more on it. We were like, I don't understand. Well, it's simple. <laughs> on the PS3, I was watching Blu-ray movies. I was on PSN. You know, I preferred the free online internet, so I was on there and more. Um, you know, I was playing games like Mag. I was playing Mod Nation Racers. And you know, I was playing Uncharted. I was into those games more so than I was into Halo. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, I'd play on the PC. You know, all the Call of Duties, I'd play on the PC. So a lot of the 360 exclusives or the titles that were big on the 360, I'd play on the PC. I didn't say I don't like the 360s, just I was on the PC more. I was on the PS3 more. So, um, it's, I don't know. I don't know. It, 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 for him to say he switched completely to the PS3, I, I can't, I can't even say that. Even though I, I've done more in the PS3, I, I, I can't say that I will make it my platform of choice. I tell people I'm primarily a PC gamer. I've always been a primarily a PC gamer ever since I've been in college. You know, that's what I was doing in college. I was playing PC games. Um, even though I did play console games a lot, I was primarily playing real-time strategy games. I was playing shooters. I was playing all that stuff, RPGs, on the PC. And I just that's just the way I am. Um, but, I don't know, I just... I'm not going to one day go, well, I'm not going to play PC anymore. I'm going to go play 360 now. Uh, I don't know. I don't think he's going to abandon 360 like a lot of people think he is. So apparently the comments on this thing was pretty bad. Everybody called him a traitor and all this stuff. Um, I think he's still going to play the 360. I think he's going to like the 360. I mean, that I, I've got Alan Wake on the 360. I need to finish it, but, you know, I've got Alan Wake on the 360. I think it's a good game. But, you know, i got more games on the, on the PS3. And even more, especially especially due to the to the uh, Steam sales. Oh, my goodness. I, guys, I got so many games from the Steam sale. I didn't buy them. I, I was gifted these games. I got so many games. And I'm looking at other titles like like uh like DC Universe Online and I'm looking at Little Big Planet 2 coming out and I'm going, man, when these games come out, what am I gonna do? <laughs> what am I gonna do? I got all these games, I got all these I got Stalker Call of Pripyat, I got Stalker Shadow Chernobyl, Metro twenty thirty three the whole Deus Ex collection. I got Dead Space. I got freaking uh, the freaking cactus gifted me uh, Hitman last night. So I got the Hitman series now. It's just all these games just piling up on top of dirt and on top of uh, the uh, THQ series. I got Amnesia now. Anyway, um, it's going to be a big year for gaming in 2011. So I, that's the point I'm making is that I think I really think this guy's going to be playing 360 games on it, and you know there's there are some unannounced Microsoft exclusives that nobody knows about. Um, you know we're kind of holding that with a grain of salt, but uh, I think he'll be playing it. But kudos for him to come out and say that you know that I'm just going to switch to the PS3. So check it out. This is on IGN.com. Um, it was published uh, December 30th. Now, let's talk about this next story. Angry Birds. And this is the most popular game right now on the iPhone and on Android. It's, uh, it's definitely a game to watch. And this, this goes back to the point I made on, a, on my podcast on Born.org Radio about how the iPhone and mobile gaming market on Android and iOS are really going to put up a fight against the PSP and the DS. Um, I talked about how Sony was the first to step up to the plate and recognize that competition. They came out with a series of commercials and they were saying, we got good kids playing bad games, that kind of thing with uh, what's his name. Um, and uh, Nintendo eventually came out and said, okay, we're going to recognize the iPhone and the uh, 
uh, the Android as viable mobile platforms that we're going to go against. So this next story is kind of big in that regard. It's it's the most popular game right now by far on these phones. And now it's coming to the PSP. As a PSP mini, meaning that you can play it on your PS3 as well, in certain cases. Um, but it is going to come to the Wii and the Xbox 360. But it's coming to the PSP first. So I'm like, wow. This is uh, pretty cool for that platform because this game is not only is it addictive, it's fun. Some games can be addictive and not fun. <laughs> this game is addictive. <laughs> I'm just joking. This game is addictive and fun, and I think it's going to bring the PSP to a new level if people buy it. Um, it's you, you can spend hours with this game. I, I think I finished it. I didn't finish it twice. I finished it like one and a half times in like one sitting. Um, this first iteration is going to have 63 levels. Uh, and th these guys are already filthy rich. These uh, Angry Birds guys, they released it on the Android platform for absolutely free. So I think they're, they're going to use ad revenue on that platform. But on, on iOS, on the iPhone, they've been number one like forever. <laughs> so they're making so much money. But it's coming to PSP and PS3 as a mini game probably tomorrow uh, night-ish. When the PS, the PlayStation Network updates, check it out, guys. Angry Birds. This was on SlashGear.com. Okay, this next story is kind of sad, so you might want to check your weeping pores of your eyes. Um. Apparently, there is this World of Warcraft kid who was involved in a, fair, a pre, fairly serious accident where he lost his hearing. And as a result, he had been part of this World of Warcraft guild for, I think, over four years. And he had lost his hearing. So as a result, you know, he couldn't communicate with his guildmates on Ventrilo, which is the voice chat, pra voice chat uh, program that a lot of PC gamers use to communicate. We use Mumble here at... Uh, at Buona.tv. So he couldn't listen and, and you know communicate. Um, and it was kind of sad to hear that he was kicked, kicked out of the guild for being deaf. And that's what it boiled down to. I mean, he listed he has this long complaint here um, about you know what happened and you know how his guild mates didn't want to compromise. And and I, I got to thinking. I was like, doesn't World of Warcraft have text chat? People do use the text chat, don't they? I mean, they had, this guy had been with this guild for four years. He had become friends with these guys. <laughs> I was say, it's sad, man. It's, it's sad and pitiful at the same time that they would not only... I mean, I can understand this. Like, all right, dude, you know, you can help us out. You know, he, I think he even put in here that he was able to look up some of the things on the wiki. He would help out in the middle of the guild. He would tell people what to do. He would coordinate, you know, via text. But they just kicked him out of the guild completely. I, I, I mean, I do understand that it is a game. I do understand it is just a game. Um, and... It's something that, you know, we really shouldn't look at as a catastrophic, you know, life-ending event that he got kicked from this guild. But that's just mean. That's, that's like, that's like, the, that's the only thing I could come up with. When you when you talk about that, I know it's just a game. I know it's this guild. Wow, you know it's virtual, but that's just mean, man. The kid's suffering. 
he lost he had hearing and he said he was even wrestling with not being able to listen to music not even to 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 uh to 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 talk to people you know and do the things he used to do he's struggling he needs support and you kick him out the guild i know it's just a game i know but that's just mean that's just mean that's all that's all i can think of to say about that and i uh, i i don't know why i don't know why they would do that um i don't understand their their motivations because wow is a social game it's not you know anti-social game you have to communicate with people in a mmorpgs you just have to i mean you can solo your whole way through the game but you still got to talk to people <laughs> It, it's like you can't get around it. And they put text chat in the game, and they got accessibility options. I think some people even wrote some accessibility um, add-ons for a while. I, I got to find that story. I think I found that. Man, this is sad. Check it out, guys. I posted a link in the chat. It's over on blog, technical.com. Wild player kicked. Kicked. Completely kicked from the guild because he was deaf. That's me, man. Just plain flat out me all right we're gonna move to the next story and that is our final story which is probably the coolest story of the year and it's january 3rd so i can say that it's the coolest story of 2011 coolest yeah fallout 3 gets an 8-bit demake Buana, what's a demake a demake is when you take an existing game and then you down convert it into a lesser looking game, a lesser form, such as an 8-bit 80s looking game, such as this. This is Sparta. No, this is Fallout. Fallout 3, if you go to the site, I was, I was telling people about it, and it's like all in Japanese, and I was sad. And I was like, oh, sad face times 20. Because it's it looks so oh it is it's it's a JRPG eight bit deep uh, demake of Fallout three you can follow the link in the uh, in the chat let me post it here hold on let me get the link for you guys in the chat so you can check it out while you're listening to it um it's a full blown flash version JRPG demake of Fallout three it's oh, Makes it makes you it makes you want to learn Japanese. It does. It does. Some people may want to take up Japanese just so they can play this. Yeah. Pretty sure they're getting a lot of requests. A lot of requests for an English version. Very very cool. This is easily, like I said, guys. This is easily the best story of 2011. <laughs> Ooh, it's January 3rd. Check it out, guys. This is uh pretty epic. Fallout 3 gets an 8-bit D make and uh It's epic. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Check it out. Over on escapistmagazine.com. Do you guys if you're watching this, post some feedback on the video um on the YouTube channel when I post it. Let me know if you want me to post these links. Um, just let me know if you want me to post these links because I, I may not do it this time, but for future shows, I can post like a. Um, I, I used to do delicious.com links, so you can have links to all the stories so you can read them. Um, so just let me know via feedback, whether it be in a, on, a, on a comment or in a chat or in future episodes, if you want me to include the links, because. You know, it's a little bit work, a little bit more work on my part, but if you guys want it, I'll I'll do it. All right. Okay. We're gonna move to the second half or the second part of our show. And um we are going to ask you all if you have any stories you want to discuss. Now, it's 
imperative that you ask a moderator in the chat. We got a couple hanging around. Um, to give you permission to post a link. If you post a link, it's, you're going to get a temporary timeout. Um, so go ahead and say, can I post a link? Like Bastosa just did. He has a link about allegedly stolen 3DS pics. The mod would do this, which Robbie just did. Permit Bastosa. Now Bastosa can post the link. Perfect example. And that's going to be our first story we're going to talk about. So just follow Bastos' example. And we're going to look at this link here. Let me know if there's sound, guys. I don't have my headphones on, so if there's an ad playing. <laughs> if there's an ad playing or something, let me know. Okay. Allegedly stolen 3DS pics posted online. And there's nice little Yoshi there. Hmm. Is that legit? Is it live or is it Memorex? Hmm. An assembly line worker in China who has remained anonymous for obvious reasons claims to have smuggled an incomplete version of the 3DS out of the factory he works in and he posted pictures of his misbegotten prize online. Besides, it's missing his last piece of plastic. This model also apparently does have all the guts in it either, or as attempts to play Super Mario Bros. 64 DS only result in a black screen showing the handheld's SDK version and memory. Now he's got some, man, I want some of these figurines. Forget the freaking DS. Wait a minute. Hold up. Stop. This, buy. This, yes. This, no. This, Yes, where'd you get these from? I want these. No. Where are the figurines? No, I don't want to see that. I want these. Yes. I want those. You need to tell me about those. Forget the DS. Anyway. Here's a screen <coughs> of the, uh, I can't read the text from here. It's pretty far away, but it seems to have the uh, SDK version and something else there. Wow. Pretty epic pictures. Pretty epic pictures. He's, I don't know if this person is going to be fired. They're probably going to audit the factory. They're going to look at video cameras say, hey, you had a slight bulge in your backpack. <laughs> Good story, man. Check it out. This is over on oneup.com. They have uh, the pictures. Next one. The Spartan next. Yeah, Spartan has the next link. <clears throat> And apparently, this is on Kotaku. Let's make this a little smaller. CES 2011. <coughs> Connect clones for PC? That looks legitimate. That's an Asus camera. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now we're going to have people jumping around in front of their PCs. <laughs> and then it kind of adds to the uh <coughs> kind of adds to the story about people already hacking the connect drivers for PC. We've already seen people playing World of Warcraft with the connect. But apparently CES, let's see. Asus Prime Sense they're going to show this off at CES. Yeah, they went straight to the guys who make the Kinex camera, and they're, they're going to do the exact same thing. It's going to be the Wavy... Wait. 
The name is the Wavy Shin. The Wavy Shin. The, the, the hmm. Wavy Shin. Daddy, can I play your wavy shin? Hmm. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue like connect. Extian the wavy skin the wavy action 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 Action? Is it action? Wavy action? Wavy action? Action. Action. I got it. It's action. Wavy action. 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 Oh. Okay. Anyway. Pretty cool. We'll probably be seeing some videos of this next week. Of the wavy action. <laughs> Check it out. Great link, guys. Alright, the next one is... X Banana Boy. I think. Yep. And this is Pokemon. Pokemon Black and White arriving March 6th. Can I see your Pokemans? Anyway, Nintendo's Dual DS exclusives bring the bevy of all new pokemon to u.s soil in just over three months I'm not a big pokemon fan but i know a lot of you are uh pokemon black and white don't know much else to say about it that is coming out in march and you guys will probably be having fun is this going to be on the 3ds as well are they going to make a 3DS version of this? I don't see anything mentioned of the 3DS. Hmm. I guess not. Good old Link. Thanks, Banana Boy, for the link about Pokemon Black and White coming out on March 6th. Now, next story is... Uh, scrolling up here, I think one of these didn't actually come across as link, so I'll copy and paste it. <clears throat> Wait, did you post the right link, or is that, okay. You posted a YouTube link as well. So should I click on the YouTube link? All right. So apparently, DefCon 18. Let's bring up the browser here. DefCon 18 pwned by the owner of what happens when you steal a hacker's computer. Okay. All right. Um, I have it on no less of an authority at, of speaking on at DefCon. Uh, than Jason Scott here, that everyone is really confused about what room they're supposed to be in, and talks should start like a few minutes late. So to, to fill in some time before I get started, I thought I'd just tell you a little story about my other experience with um, computers and the police, which was soon after I got to MIT. You know, okay. You get to MIT and... This, this video is 21 minutes. Um, can I get a summary? <laughs> uh, what happened? Go to eight minutes. All right, thank you. Shit. 
machine that was stolen in Boston now seems to be on a Cox.net dial-up in Las Vegas. So I call the cops right away, and they say, oh yeah, we'll subpoena that IP record. And I said, well, you gotta make sure that you get a historical record for this, because this is a dial-up uh, dynamic IP. It's gonna change a lot. It's gonna be totally worthless if you look it up now, and it's not assigned to any. Okay, so what happened? Uh, I'm not gonna play the whole thing. Uh, so just tell me in text what happened. And we can share the link, uh, however. Hacker traces him, he gets his computer back. It was stolen years before. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, that was kind of long. Uh, so now let's do Nick's link. This is the 13th annual independent games festival. Uh, they announce main competition finalists. And the finalists, let's say the most prestigious indie games are led by multiple nominations. The standout titles including Amnesia, Dark Descent, Minecraft, uh, Desktop Dungeons, Bastion, Nidhogg, some other titles in here. Almost 400 main com competition entries. Big time indie game list here. Very cool. So, um, we scroll down. They have some nominees here Minecraft, Technical Excellence, Amnesia, Grand Prize, Honorable Mentions. So it looks like a bunch of nominees here. Very long article though. A good link. The Independent 2011 Independent Games Festival's um, main competition finalists. Okay. Next link is going to be from a Loria fan. Okay. Top seven hideous gaming disasters of 2010 we desperately want to forget. And I hope these are all family safe. Nintendo's ad campaign. Super Nintendo. Nintendo 64. GameCube. I do remember that one. And we fit Weight Watchers. Okay. J. Edward Show How to Customize Your Dragon. The PSP. The Apocalypse. And it seems there's a bunch more. A bunch of different articles on failed gaming events. <clears throat> the way Rare dissolved. Oh, an ATB. I mean, I'm sorry, APB. Microsoft at E3. <laughs> Skittles! Oh, that's that's kind of a disturbing picture of Skittles. I guess they're talking about how casual gaming is taking out the core titles of the 360. Activision, just Activision. 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> the skate titles. Lots of memories from 2010. Here's uh, Kotick. Butchering Infinity Ward. Lots and lots of stuff. That's good link. Lots here, though. I can't go over it all. Okay. <clears throat> Intel Sandy Bridge coming out to CES. I saw that story. Not kind of, not gaming related per se. It is PC related. Um, but that's the main reason why I didn't cover it here. It's not directly gaming related. More Mass Effect DLC coming. I still haven't played this game. Can't get past Mass Effect 1. Uh, so this DLC is coming. Says the one year anniversary of the service, but resume a week after blah, 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 blah. Okay. Bioware has announced that the game's daily Cerebrus network news updates will stop on the 24th. Wow. So they're going to kill that. Okay. All right, guys. I think that's enough stories. I think we went through about five or six links. Um, we've gone for about an hour and 15 minutes. I don't want to prolong it too long. Uh, but thanks, everybody, for coming by tonight. We had a great time here at Game Chat with Buona. And, uh, yeah, it's been an hour, guys. It's been an hour and 15 minutes. And we try to do this every Monday night at 8 p.m. We talk about gaming stories. Um, and uh, we have fun doing it. <laughs> we have a lot of fun doing it. So if you're watching via YouTube or on my Buona.tv site, you can stop by here at Justin.tv slash Buona every Monday night. You can come by, join us, join the discussion, submit your own links. Um and uh you can get involved with the community as well so thanks everybody for coming by this is game chat with buona episode six sorry to believe we've already got six under our belt <laughs> this will be posted no later than wednesday or thursday i'm thinking at the latest thursday take some time to download it encode it um plus i'm going back to work this week so it's going to be pretty pretty uh pretty hectic so look for it on your youtubes later this week and uh i want to thank everybody for coming by this is game chat one episode six y'all and that is it for this particular one so we'll see you guys next week same time same station Bye bye <laughs>